Point Weekly Podcast, Episode 3. I am your host, Poison. I am here with my co-host. I'm your co-host. Dad, yeah. not uh, the rapper who went after KSI. No, uh, but not, the, not the much that cooler stupid. one. The much yeah. cooler one. So, More we're epic. Gonna, we're going to roll right into it with the recent game results for Watch yes. Points. So, we're going to... I'll let you, you take that away with the watch point results. You start with that one. So, in recent games, and uh, week one of stage two started, and uh, the first game was a forfeit, uh, and WGA ID zero won mm. by forfeit, and uh, the other another tier two game. Was a close one, but the council won over against Team Boomers, mm-hmm. uh, two to one, and there was a tie. Week three, the Empire forfeit, um, and surrender pity. I don't know if I'm saying that wrong. I don't care. Uh, one by four zero, oh, and uh, the uh, another tier two game, Midnight Purple versus now a tier two team, Aces, uh, won by three maps, three to one, and the MVP was uh North from Team Ace. And then in the oh, most yeah. recent game was a forfeit by Puke, and then Hourglass in uh, one by four maps, no MVP. So we're going to be rolling into the second seg- segment, which is questions. Question time. So yeah, if we're going to be doing the questions, uh, I think. You think I should do it? Uh, the first one. Or you don't want to. Do you want to do this? Uh, first, you first you one? you do the first one. So I don't okay, know what, so what questions with um, <laughs> who do you think will get uh banned next week? I'm gonna guess they mean heroes. Um, I think Reinhardt. Uh, Reinhardt's already been banned, but it, yeah, it could be a uh, could be a chance. Um, uh, maybe. Wait, who's banned last week? I've already forgot. Same here. Um, maybe May, because um, if Florida Mayhem were playing, Yaki would just dominate on May. We saw yeah. it uh, in week uh, last week. Well, last like fifteen weeks. Um, so like in fifteen weeks ago, that's what I meant. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's probably what I think. Most likely May. So we're gonna go into the next question. That that was by Moon, and this is by Moon. Uh, who do you think will win Seoul versus San Francisco match? And do you all think do you think Seoul has a good chance with their current roster? So, we're both going to give our opinions. So, I think um, San Francisco isn't that strong of a team if I'm being a I think yeah. Seals may take it. Yeah, I've, they... I've got to agree there. Like, Seal, Seal's strong right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, they're doing really well. Like, not the best, but they're doing well. Mm-hmm. And, San I mean, that's Francisco... what, and that's what everybody thought about. That's what everybody thought about Philly. They were like, oh, yeah, they're the underdog. Yeah, Paris just wiped the floor with him and set a record. Yeah, so I, I think if they, I think they'll be too cocky, and they'll be like, mm-hmm. "All right, we can easily take this." They might not practice for how strong that Seoul might just like catch them off guard. And we have an update: Seoul in San Francisco is not even happening. Oh wow! It's so the recent games. Actually, this rolls another segment. Uh, the recent game. Games, which uh, Gwang Zhao Charge, I don't know if I'm saying that wrong or botching it, got 0 3 by uh, the Seal, uh, not Seal, by Shanghai Dragons, and Shendu Hunters uh, lost 2 3 by the Hangzhou Spark. And then mm. in about 30 minutes, uh, Toronto is facing Boston, then it is uh, Valiant versus Seoul, then it is Seoul, sorry, uh, then it is uh, San Francisco versus the Gladiators, then it is Shendu versus um, uh, Shanghai. Uh, Hangzhou versus Guangzhou, uh, Florida versus Atlanta. That's what I was saying. Yaki is gonna absolutely sweep the floor tomorrow with yeah. Atlanta. Um, then it's Seoul versus LA Glads. Then it's LA Valiant versus San Francisco, and that's gonna end off week eight. Well, week eight, quote unquote. Yeah. So I think I'm the, surprised uh, that like so Florida's doing really well. Mm, that really well. I'm really impressed. Like, they've made massive changes to their roster. Mm-hmm. Same, um, same with the LA Valiant. 
They have they have an entire they have an entirety of um uh, uh, like their entirety of their roster is new and they've been actually showing other teams that they uh are actually good. Yeah, they're like here to stay in a way. Like so I, I think they've they've shown that most Western teams are now stay like staying away from Western players in a way. Showing that Western players might not be as strong as like USA has always been like USA has always been a dominant team in World Cup, but it seems like more teams are picking up like Korean players, even mm-hmm. ones that aren't even that well known. Like mm-hmm. you, you look at um, Jonak, he was he wasn't well known, but he popped off in season one. Mm-hmm. They're 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 leaning towards very unknown players of a team without like showing they might not have experience. Well, Western players have experience on the stage of Overwatch, but they're not being picked up as much as some Korean players. So we're going to be rolling into the next question is, um, how well are Fury going to do this season by Big Sti 69 Very, very funny uh, uh, name, if I'm being a thousand percent honest. Uh, how well are going to uh, Fury do this season, be honest? Um, I think with Kretas, uh resigning from team captain and a new team captain stepping up, I don't think that Fury will do that well, if I'm being 100% honest. Fury has almost an entirely different roster, like mostly different roster than last, than last season, and they are the only team that made it through the entirety of stage one without pretty much, uh, without pretty much losing, like, most of their team, like most, they've had a solid team, like, like three yeah. uh stage one, like in a couple weeks, but it has like, if we go back all the way to week one, like Fury win, Fury, and then they went oh oh one and one, then then they lost again, and as soon as that week, as soon as week two uh started, they just went on a losing streak, they went oh. One in, I believe, three before they could get another win, and that was a forfeit. And all of most of their wins have been forfeits. Week six they lost, and then week seven, uh, they lost by a forfeit. So most of their like both of their wins, are like yeah, most of their wins last season were for, were forfeits. Like mm-hmm. theory going into uh um stage two was in sixth. With only two games won under their belt and nine maps won under their belt, so I don't think they are they're gonna be doing good, but they may do better than last season. Now, like I'm, I'm gonna like disagree with you here because of if them they've got a new roster and a new captain, the new captain could bring something that the other captain didn't. They could have more stricter times where they pl- practice more, they become a better team more, they become more synergized. What the other team probably lacked was communication and synergy, al- along with the players might not be as um, confident as the other players. So a new captain could bring a new sense of spirit to the team. And the new, new, um, the new roster could also synergize a lot better. So it could it might be a completely new team. Mm-hmm. But it could also be completely different in the way that they they, they don't win just by, via forfeits, and they 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 also show up to more games, and you get to see mm-hmm. them more. Because they haven't like they uh picked up Brandon, I think uh they picked up Brandon um and they haven't really picked up anybody in the past couple days, and I'm saying uh they signed they signed Aaron. Who is a pretty decent um, uh, player uh, all around? Uh, then they yeah. dropped uh, uh, GR three, who is um, actually got uh, added to Hourglass, and then yeah, like we haven't really seen that many players being picked up and or dropped from uh, Fury. Yeah. Um So I don't think that. Fury has an entirely different roster. They may uh, switch some things up, run some different strategies to try to uh, yeah. impact what they're doing. But I think Fury is going to be an interesting 
team to uh, look at the entirety of uh, the year. Because mm. I, I think if they go with a new roster, that, that could be the thing that gets the team out of the dump. Dropping players and picking them up won't really synerg- synergize well because of a new player will always be coming in. You want a team that knows each other well. So if I go with my past experiences of being on a team and me being captain, I even when we were bottom of the te- like bottom of the league, I still kept with the same team because I knew that even if we might be doing bad now, the things that we were lacking, we can improve on. Mm-hmm. And that's what the cap- new captain also has to realise. They, they need to see what the new team is, and the team is lacking and what the team are doing well in and try and work on the things they're doing bad at and stick well with the things that they're doing good at. Okay. So, next question i think this may be the last oh. question second to last uh i think this is going to be the last question and then we'll answer the rest uh in the second uh questions segment yeah. uh, uh question which countries do you think will end up in the world cup finals for watch point now me and dax were oh. talking about this actually before the podcast and we agreed england versus uh u.s oh that would be such a Good. Mostly but, because um, uh, but, if I'm uh, coming up here, yes, uh, if I'm coming up here, uh, league announcements, like for I mean Sweden may have a chance, but it's maybe yeah, Canada, Sweden and Canada. I think if I'm gonna be completely honest, and obviously I'm from the UK, I'm gonna be biased. UK will be first, then mm. US, and then I think Canada and Sweden will fight out for third. But there could be, like, if South Korea gets enough players, they only have four. If they get enough players, then they could easily be, uh, uh, like, up there. Like, it's all it's all teams, like, one team might have more tier, like, tier one players. But it's not just, like, tier one players. It's, again, synergy. Like, if a team always argues, they're not going to be do well. Mm-hmm. They've got to be focused. And But I'm always going to say UK is going to win. Mm-hmm. So... I think I'm the team captain for Team US, and I think I'm um, leaning towards UK taking it because they have Daz, Blame, Matt, Awality, Dax. They have Aiden. They have Rennie, Breadstick. They have so many people that can pack heat. They can do so much as a team, and their chemistry is off the charts. I feel like England is going to take it probably against either um, Canada or the US. I think I Sweden think we'll go up against Canada in the last one. Like um, I think in the final one, like for the finals, it will definitely be US versus UK because of US do- definitely have some strong people. Like mm-hmm. they've got twenty, they've got twenty seven people wanting to play. There's there's definitely going to be some strong people there. Like you, there's going to be a lot of synergy. So if it does come down to US versus UK, it's going to be a close game, very mm-hmm. close. Because it's not going to just be a team wipe. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to move on to the next segment on our podcast, which is going to be upcoming Overwatch League games. We've already done that, so we're going to be doing suggestions <laughs> for Watch, which. What do you think that we should suggest, um, uh, Dax? The watch point is a really like is that like, wait suggestion for watch point? Did you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and I'm not just gonna be like biased and say, oh, the server's great, but it is really it's laid out very well. I think, and now I like doing podcast. More podcast like members that like, have guests on that be that they can then they can put through their ideas mm-hmm. and that. So like it's not just two people; it's like a few people joining. Maybe get the winners and like the MVPs from the games to come and join in. Be like, oh, this is what we did, and like we could get co- the coaches to talk about how 
they they were they did well as their class. Like if they played like Reinhardt, how they became really good at Reinhardt and give out tips as being like a tier one Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, I feel like um more casters, more podcasters. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but all around, yeah, the server is great. It's laid out very well. It's so easy to find. But I feel like um. Like the casters, the caster situation, it has gone up, but not yeah. enough. And I feel like, um, like, cause I'm in a, I, I was in a rock league, um, uh, like kind of like watch point, but it was for another game and I was a team captain for a team. And like, I would watch my team, uh, my, uh, my players play like on uh, Twitch where they streamed. And they had overlay overlays. They had like who the casters were. They had like like overlays for the score. They had like how many games they won. So if we can get like some overlays or like yeah, to, like, I I, get I agree. Overlays, yeah. I think that would work. Yeah, that would be really good. Because of people could come late into the stream, and then they would obviously ha- have to ask a uh, Twitch chat. For the like the results, but having it all laid out really well on the screen could help a lot of people finding out like oh what's the score, how can I join the league, what's the mm-hmm. chats like, and just like what's yeah the, what's the Discord, yeah like so yeah, to welcome people more in a way mm-hmm. yeah so what we're gonna do uh, next one is. Uh, predictions for Overwatch League. So, I will read out some games, and you tell me who is going to, who you think is going to win. So, uh, Toronto versus Boston. Who do you think is going to win? Oh God. Um, if I'm, I think it will be close because they're both basically in the same bit. But I think Toronto will win. I I one thousand percent agree with you. I don't think Boston because I the last time Boston played in uh, two games they got one three by uh Washington and then they got three would by Atlanta. So yeah. I don't think that uh Boston they're not is, in the best uh, <laughs> not in the best area right now. Mm-hmm. I mean they can probably secure the win, but I don't think they'll uh, it would be good. Yeah, if they uh, do, then it would be close. Mm-hmm. Next game, uh, LA Valiant versus uh, Seoul Dynasty. I think Seoul Seoul will take this. Uh, it's gonna be close, but with yeah. McGravy on Diva and the entirety of uh, LA Valiant, um, I feel like um, it's gonna be close, but I feel like Seoul's gonna win three uh, one. Hmm. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, it would definitely be close because I think they're bo- they're both in the same area right now. Being like, they're both strong. Both got new rosters from part of previous season, and I think they both the the new rosters in a way help them. Like LA's got a new roster. Technical difficulties, but okay. Next game: San Francisco Shock versus LA Glads. I want San Francisco to win. I feel like San Francisco is gonna take it. Gladiators yeah. haven't won a game yet. Yeah, so, they're not doing. They're not doing well. They're not doing. They're <laughs> not. Okay, so, uh, Shenzhou Hunters versus um, uh, Shanghai Dragons. Hmm. Uh, I think Shanghai could take that. Shanghai definitely. Yeah, Shanghai did three zero. Uh, uh, actually, this morning. Which would be yeah. four AM EST or eight AM uh, GMT. Yeah, so that was early. Thinking about it right, I wasn't up. Fantastic. Okay, so speaking of Overwatch League, the, the next game, which is going to be Boston Toronto, is going to be starting in about twenty minutes. Make sure to go to to the uh, Overwatch League YouTube channel if you want, if you're going to watch that. Um, yeah. so I feel like Shendu is going to take it because um. We saw, as they played last uh, year, uh, in the last Overwatch League season, they just outright bested everybody. They have smarts, they have, mm. uh, like, a good built roster, well-built roster, sorry, grammar, uh, and, like, a lot of uh, things going well for them, 
and it's they're going to be going into their first game playing the uh one of the best teams in the league. But I feel like they can uh, take them out. Yeah, I feel like if they do take it out, it'll be like from last season where they they always did really well against the top league in a way. They they outsmarted them and did their own strategies. Things that the other teams wouldn't think of. So I think it is going to be Sorry for this, I think a bit of difficulties with Poison's mic. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. My back? Yeah, yeah, you're here, you're here. <laughs> okay. So what? hangs out spark versus uh Gwangso Charge. I think uh hangs out. Oh, yeah, same. Just because of they're doing better in the league mm-hmm. than uh, Guangzhou, so I think Hangzhou will take it another win okay. for them. I yeah. I think yeah. It, I don't think it'll be a, like a smashing defeat. I think they'll like Guangzhou will get a map, maybe a draw, mm-hmm. but not nothing like uh amazing really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, next game, Florida Mayhem versus Atlanta Rain. I feel like this one could be a bit closer. Like, the, oh, yeah, this game could be a bit closer than all the others. Because they're both sitting at, uh, like, the wins are both sitting at two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might be looking at the wrong one, but uh, they're both yeah. sitting around the same area. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Florida has turned it around. Uh, against both teams that they played, and they were mm. supposed to actually uh, have a, a homestead. Um, uh, actually, week six was supposed to be their homestead, but then uh, big ol' COVID nineteen Corona came in with like Naji, like, that na- ain't happening. Yeah, yeah, that nab, nab, nabby. Nabby. Okay, so next game, uh, I think this should be easy. LA Gladiators versus uh, Soul Dynasty. Oh, that will be easy. One for Soul Dynasty. Soul, yeah, Soul all the way. Um, yeah. Now l- the last game of the two day eight game uh, series, um, uh, the Valiant versus the Shock. Um, I I want to give it to sh- uh, Shock again, because Valiant, like Shock, I've all, I like as a team quite a lot. I've if 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 London Spitfires don't do well, I'll always support Shock. Um, but yeah, so I'll 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 have to go with Shock, just for, for biased reason. Uh, I'm gonna say that I I said this before. Um, but Valiant has an entirely, a entirely different roster, mm. and they uh they're gonna do uh wonders like they scored yeah, an amazing definitely. uh. Uh, win over uh Dallas in week one, so yeah. they may be able to take it, but it's gonna be close. But I feel like the Valiant are gonna fall short to the Shock. To be honest, if I'm gonna go from a non-biased point of view, Valiant will probably take it in a very close game, mm-hmm. just because of new roster. Mm-hmm. I think they're they're doing well right now. I think they'll be. Okay, so we're running into the next segment, which is going to be Overwatch League Hero Bands. Oh, this week has been killing me for Hero Bands. Oh my god. Four hit scans. Are you kidding me? Wait, who? This week is uh, Somva. Well, I'm trying to think of this off the top of my head. Somva Soldier, McQueen. Widowmaker, if I'm fully correct, if it's this week or was that last week? Um, I'm sure it's this week. Yeah, it's this week. Uh, I will look it up if I lag out because I'm on the uh, Overwatch League app. Okay, but I'm most likely like if it's uh, and the uh, healer was ba- is Baptiste and Tank is Diva, which are basically 
all the deep, some of the most of the DPS I play actually with Soldier McCree and Sombra. Diva is one of the tanks I play, and Baptiste is obviously just a very overpowered healer in my opinion. They have not put it out. I think no. Hold on. I can't remember when they update the hero band. Nope, that was supposed to be last week, but it never happened. So, uh, echo. Revealed. War Seek Playbook. Shark on top. No. Because of when I loaded Overwatch, that's what it said. And I was very upset. Because recently I've taken a little bit of a break from Overwatch, from being burnt out of Overwatch. Like, Overwatch and... is obviously going to be one of my favourite games. Oh, definitely. But with a lag out, it does not seem that we, that the Overwatch League has put out the hero bands on the Overwatch League app. So, am sorry. Am sorry. So, uh, uh, Overwatch League standings. So, Overwatch League standings rolling into... Uh, week technically get uh in fact going. I don't have to go screenshot of it. Uh, uh it's in fact going. It's, we'll just run the top five, and then so the. Uh, in number one, it is the Vancouver Titans. Number two is going to be the San Francisco Shock. Three is going to be the NYXL. Four is going to be the Philadelphia Fusion. And number five is going to be the Paris Eternal. And then so those are the top five standings for Overwatch. So we're going to be rolling into more questions from everybody in the podcast podcast questions we're going to be starting out with the world's best he says who do you think will be the best in the league from raiders and where will they place um, um i actually don't know who's on world's best i mean not on not world's best on raiders uh, except Maybe for uh, like world's me. best uh they have i'm gonna go to their roster and i'll tell you who they have Team this is the smoothest podcast ever. It is. It is honestly yeah, amazing. We're, we're, between, just, we're just that we're, good. We're, between lagout and just yeah. us not even knowing anything. It's amazing. So, the captain is going to be Liam. Their tanks are uh, Nikolai J. Nikola J. I'm sorry. And then World's Best. And then their DPSs are Tachinza, Cypher, uh, Skit, Hotbar. And then their supports are Liam, uh, Lupus, Lily, Egghead, and their flex are Mis- uh, Mr. Bunsky, and their coach is Nats. So that could honest... easily be, that could be a good team. Uh, Sounds honestly, like I, b- I believe that Hotbar is the best uh, on Raiders because um, all around good player, uh, like re- uh, a really good. Uh, DPS, we've seen multiple games, we've seen uh, uh, multiple plays made by Hotbar, so I think Hotbar may take it. Like, Hotbar may be the best mm. DPS. Yeah. Either, uh, either that or... I always go for a flex player. If a person can flex well onto different roles, then I'll, I'll think that they'll be the best, just because they can help the team in multiple Wait, it's they might not be like the best in one role, but if you can help the team in multiple ways, then yeah, you'll you I think you'll be the better one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll help the team more. Yeah. So that question is done. But we're gonna be moving into the next question and the last question. Who do you, who do you think is the best team in tier tier two right now and the best players? If the players were in T3, include that. Okay, so uh, in Tier 2, the best team? Aces by a landslide. 
They have the dynamic mm. DPS duo between Phantom and OGC, and mm. I feel I feel like Aces are just gonna sweep the floor with everybody in T two. But I feel like um, I feel like um, so maybe maybe um, WGA or Council will post up a good fight. But other than that, it's gonna be uh, it's Aces. I feel like are gonna win. Yeah, I'll I'll probably I'll I think I'll agree with you there with that one. But it doesn't help that uh technically aces are in uncharted territory. They're used to playing and mowing people out of the water in um uh tier three, but they are not um. But they have gotten a win uh against Midnight Purple, which was a three mm. one. So if they can keep it up then if they can keep up the synergy from the past and keep up the power they once had in that tier then they can ca- carry on in my opinion I think they'll do well mm-hmm. so uh, next question is going to be uh, Dax is going to be talking and uh, walking us through uh, his main so Dax stage is all yours so my main is my main swaps like in depending like what will be banned. But right now it's gotta be Reinhardt. I love playing main tank, and for my past team, I was a Reinhardt main with my uh, tank buddy of Impulse and a DPS. My two DPS players of uh, Blink and Unholy. So we had a good all around team and. Just playing main tank, what I would recommend with playing Reinhardt is that you always want to call out when you're putting your shield down and when you're put, like, you got your shield up. Because of that, will, that will change the team of playing defensive and offensive. Because with Reinhardt, it's always about when you're playing offensive and then playing passive when you go full back when your shield's on low. Because if you don't call out when your shield's down, then your team could get too aggressive. And your shield could be up and you're just on point being like, yo, what what the hell has just happened? But if you, if you, if you call out when your shield's going down and when your shield's going up, then you'll, you'll find out that like it will be a lot easier for your team to help you as a Reinhardt. Also with your... I never was really a big fan of Char- Charging straight into the point. Now you're playing way too aggressive at that point if you're playing my art. Because of, I'm I'm normally quite a, a an aggressive Reinhardt, which you should be when playing Reinhardt with goddamn hammer. Like you want to push in quite a lot with your team, but as you're quite slow in a way, you don't want to go too far in because your healers will just be there, be like, nah, you got that, you're dead, I'm out. So, realize when your team's behind you and when you're not, they're not, is a, is just key. And a good backup of a Zaya really helps in playing Reinhardt. So, and we're going to be going and talking about the newest addition to Watchpoint. We're going to be talking about the new Watchpoint website. Which is it's re- it's really interesting, you know. You would think that oh, it's a just a Discord, it's just a Discord server, but no, we've gotten a website now. It's actually really well made, and um, mm. for anybody watching at home or on the subway or at home, since you can't because social distancing, then just perfect. Uh, just uh, just uh, kick back and just look at the uh website. And we are also the new, uh, also a new addition to Watchpoint. We have been sponsored by a lovely website known as Fatal Grips. Fatal Grips is uh, Fatal Grips is a website to improve your gaming. You can get skins on your uh, PS4 controllers, uh, like Xbox controllers, Nintendo Switch controllers. You can get skins, light decals. You can get thumbsticks. You can get um, like it uh, like. You can get controllers. You can buy so many things 
that can improve your gaming, it's amazing. And you can get it for all a low price. And you want to know how those prices get even lower? If you use code WATCHPOINT to get 10% off on all purchases. Like, it's free money. So, use code WATCHPOINT and get yourself 10% off. And we get, uh, and pad, and the entire server gets some kickback to help the server grow. And it just, uh, it helps us and it helps you. Oh, my God.